Hey, Freedom Fighters, Rob Berger here, author of Retire Before Mom and Dad. It is uh, 4.36 in the morning. I basically just rolled out of bed. I, I didn't set my alarm for this early. I couldn't sleep. I haven't even bothered to comb my hair, it looks like. Uh, I'm a mess. My wife is still upstairs, of course, asleep. Hopefully, recording this video won't wake her up. If it does, well, it'll be a, <laughs> it'll be a long day for me. Uh, but I wanted to share something with you. So I wake up, I woke up at like four and I started reading some articles on the internet and it, then it led to another article and then to a video and then to a podcast and then to an idea for this video. And what I want to share with you is how I am learning, how I am trying to not just remember the information and content that I consume, whether it's a podcast, a video, an article. But then how I take that information and piece it together with other things that I've learned and perhaps make connections uh, that I wouldn't have otherwise made, whether it's about money and investing or about productivity or about learning or about writing or about anything, really. And uh, so that's what I want to do in this video. I'm going to show you first what happened this morning and sort of the string of content that I kind of pieced together that you know kind of resulted in me hitting record and recording this video and then i'm going to show you some of the tools that i use uh, as i'm trying to take in all of this information and i in fact just came across a new tool yesterday i'm sort of a tool a tool productivity tool junkie which is by the way not a good thing i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy uh, but i i finally found i think the tool that i'm absolutely going to use and I'll explain it in a minute and how I do it. Uh, and it's free, so that's that's great. So let me show you my computer screen. Uh, this is the article that I came across initially this morning. I don't even remember how I found it. I was on my iPad. I have a, a subscription to Medium. And somehow I came across this article by someone I don't know. I, maybe I should know who this person is, but I don't. Nicholas, I'm going to guess Goki. I could have that terribly wrong. Feather Brick Truck, your three chances to solve any problem. The article is basically about how, you know, when you first encounter a problem, it's probably a small problem and you might not, might, might even be so small, you don't even notice it. I think an example uh, the author gives is, you know, your, your child gets a detention. Although I think that's something I would notice, but in any event, you know, it's, you know it's, it's an issue, but it's not a big issue. The problem is if you ignore it, the feather becomes a brick. Uh, the problem escalates. And if you even ignore that, eventually you get run over by a truck. That I can relate to. So anyway, that's what the article is about. And in it, right at the beginning here, you can see he mentions someone named Carter Thomas, a crypto a trader. I think now he's a futures trader, but someone I'd never heard of. Again, maybe, maybe I should have, but I didn't. And it mentioned his videos. So I went to his videos, which are here. Coin Master. He had a, a YouTube a channel that he no longer publishes to. You can see if we go to all his videos, uh, his newest, oh here it is, is a year ago. So he hasn't published a video in over a year. And uh, he kind of walked away from it. And it turns out he'd walked away from another successful business before that. And I thought, this is, this is my kind of guy. I want to understand his story because I've kind of done that. You know, I made partner at a big firm, which is sort of the goal, and I walked away. And then I was in a government agency and sort of kind of made it to the, the equivalent of a partner, if you will. They don't obviously have partners in a government agency, but kind of the similar thing. And I walked away. Uh, I built Dole Roller, you know, into a, a, a remarkable business and community. I still do the podcast, but I sold it and decided to try something new. So it's kind of my MO as well. So I started kind of diving into who this Carter Thomas is. And uh, one of them was a podcast interview. And uh, here's the podcast interview, and it's it's from a, a podcast called Flow with Armana Sadi. I didn't know that podcast. I started listening to that podcast. You can see this. It's now 441 in the morning. This has all happened since about 405 this morning. In this podcast, Carter Thomas mentions an article, and I'm going to pull it up for you. It's called 1000 True Fans. Kevin Kelly. Here it is. And 
when I pulled this up and I started reading it, it occurred to me, you know, I've read this before. I, I know this site. I've read this article before, but I, I don't remember anything about it. And I started thinking, you know, that's sort of the story of my life. I've cons if I could remember even 5% of the content that I've consumed, you know, even in the last decade, I would be, I don't know, a genius or something. I mean, it just, you read all of this stuff and you forget it. If I just stopped with what I've done so far this morning, I would forget about, I would eventually, probably by this afternoon, certainly by next week, I'd forget about the feather brick and truck or anything I might learn from this article. Um, I'm not really into cryptocurrency, so I probably wouldn't document this, but if I were, I'd probably forget about this YouTube channel. Um, I might forget about this podcast and what I might have learned from the episode. And by the way, what's interesting to me is that this author, Nicholas um, Goki, this article itself is a synopsis of what he learned from this podcast. So here's an example of someone taking a podcast and rather just rather than just listening to it and then forgetting about it uh, the next day, actually took some of the information in this episode and wrote an interesting article about it. But I would have forgotten about that. And I would have forgotten about this article as I've apparently done, because as I said, I read this many years ago. And again, it was one of those things where I just read it and forgot about it. So what's, what's the solution? To, first of all, do we even need a solution? I mean, maybe we just consume a bunch of content and we don't remember it. It doesn't really affect our lives. Uh, it doesn't affect our writing in the future if we're writers. It doesn't affect our thinking, our analysis about, you know, life, whether it's productivity, money, relationships, health, whatever. For me, that's just not acceptable. That's not, if I'm going to take the time to consume this content, um, I ought to be able to extract from it what's useful to me and then maintain that information in some way so that I can use it later. I may not remember, I mean, I'm not going to have perfect recall, I'm not going to, I don't have a photographic memory, but is there a system and a tool that I can use where um, I can record information that's important to me from the content I consume that can be useful to me later? And that brings me to a, a concept called Zettelkasten, which is actually German for, well, here's the website. And this is another example. I looked this up the other day and now I forget. I mean, I think I know, but yeah, it's German for slip box. And it comes from, as you can see, actually in this Google search, Nicholas Luhmann, he developed a system. He, he became a, a professor and a very prolific uh, writer, researcher and writer. And he created a system of note taking. Now this was before computers. So he used uh, index cards. And uh, what he would do is, you know, as he came across, for example, an, an article, oops, let me go back to it, like this, he would extract from it information useful to him and record it on an index card. But here, here was the real trick to a Zettelkasten. When you think about organizing information today, if you're like me, you probably think about it in a folder system. I mean, I grew up for computers, so it was filing cabinets, and you put things in folders. And that, and of course, today it's digital, but it's kind of the same thing. You know, you look at your file structure on your computer, it's in folders and subfolders. The problem with that is it isolates the information. It puts all of the information in silos. And you can try to subdivide that, and you can create some level of organization, but those silos don't communicate with one another. You know, what if you have one thing in a silo about health and another thing in a silo or a folder about money? But it turns out there's a connection between the two. Well, how are you going to know that? How are you going to, um, how, what kind of system could you have where you might see that relationship and it might trigger additional thoughts? So that's what the Zettelkasten is designed to do. You don't just stick, stick information in categories or folders. Uh, you can almost think of one idea per note and it kind of lives by itself. You can tag it and that has some level of usefulness. But where the real usefulness comes in is when you connect that note to other notes. Now, digitally, of course, we can do that uh, through linking. We could link one file to another file, not unlike you do on a website, right? Not unlike, say, a Wikipedia. 
So that was the idea behind the, the, the Zettelkasten. And, and there have been a number of books uh, and other articles written about it and tools developed. And I want to walk through three tools and sort of my uh, how I've sort of iterated through this process and arrived at the tool that I'm going uh, to use. And hang on for a second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Wanted to grab a book. How to Take Smart Notes. Uh, I'll leave a link to it uh, below the video, but this is a book that I read uh, by Song, uh, Aaron's is his last name, A-H-R-E-N-S. I won't try his first name, uh, but how to take smart notes. It, it kind of documents and describes this process. This is Zettelkasten process. Excellent book. And um, so the question is, how do you implement this digitally? And there are a number of ways you could do it. I mean, for example, I experimented with just using Apple. I'm, um, all our computers are Macs. So just using Apple Notes, and you can link from one note to the next. Um, uh, there are different reasons why I ended up not using Apple Notes. I think there are some tools that are, are better. Uh, but let me show you the three. The third one is the one I'm actually uh, have landed on that I think is phenomenal, and it's free. So that's great. The first, though, let me show you on my computer screen is uh, the brain. Pull it up. And actually, you can see I was toying with uh, creating the Zettelkast in, in the brain. The brain is actually pretty cool software. And each one of these little, you can click on it, and it goes to the next one. It's called a thought, right? You know, right you know, the software is the brain. Inside the brain are thoughts. Um, How to Read a Book actually is a book that I read. How to Read a Book, the Classic Guide to Intelligent Reading. Uh, it's by Mortimer Adler. Originally, I think it was published in 1940. It was updated. Uh, and I started taking notes about the book. And you can see here, books read in 2020. And this I've read about 30 books this year. Uh, I'd stopped using the brain uh, for my Zettelkasten. And uh, I think the brain would be probably my second choice for software. Uh, it does sync, and you can use it um, on say an iPad, for example. Uh, and I really like the brain. Within each thought, let's go back to um, uh, this, for example. You can create tabs. So for example, I have a tab for the, the Amazon link for this book. Um, you can create um, individual files and separate them with tabs. Uh, and then you can link it. So for example, in How to Read a Book, uh, maybe it triggers some thought about, I'll just use a crazy example, Journey to the Ants, which is another book that I read this year about, well, ants. Normally you would think that how to read a book and ants would be related. And frankly, as I make this video, I can't think of a relationship. But let's just assume there was some crazy relationship. I can actually link um, one of these. I can take a, create a link, just grab and pull it over. and Boom, now they're linked. So that three years from now, if I'm in my brain, if you will, in this software, and I'm looking at how to read a book, I go, oh, that's right. There's a connection to Journey to the Ants. And I could even document that connection uh, here. I can tag each thought. So, you know, if I wanted to tag thoughts related to investing or um, thoughts related to learning or productivity or whatever you wanted, you can tag each one. And then you can, of course, view your thoughts by those tags. The brain software actually it has uh, tremendous amount of functionality and it's a fun program uh, to use. The reason I ended up moving away from it was I wanted something, I, I like the visual components to the brain, uh, but I wanted something that was frankly um, a, a little uh, easier and simple to use. Not, not so complex, not, not, it was almost like it's too feature rich for what I was looking for. Now, um, one tool that I went to next, actually, I think is probably even more uh, complicated. Not complicated is the wrong word, but certainly more involved uh, than the brain. And it's called DevonThink, DevonThink 3 on version 3. And let me see if I can pull it up. Here we go. Here it is. This is more of, you can think of it more like a file system. And there's a lot of cool features to this. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to demonstrate the, the software uh, in depth for this video, but you can create individual notes. In fact, let me, you can see I called it Zettelkasten. 
But like, here's a note on the 4% rule, which is a, a rule that can be used to determine how much money you can spend each year in retirement. And you can create links that take you to other notes, which is really the heart of a Zettelkasten. And one of the things that I like about Devon Think 3 is that, let me show you a different way. You can create um, you can create um, keep reference files here. So I create I keep PDFs of papers and whatnot. So for example, if you go to the four percent rule, um, that's how I organize the references by category. I do put references in folders. I guess old habits die hard. But if we look at um, here we go. This paper is uh, by William Bingen. It's sort of the original paper from which the four percent rule uh, derives. It's, um, I've saved it in, in this case, in Devon Think. And you can create aliases. In this case, I would use his last name and the year of the publication. And then if we go back to a note, if I want to reference that paper in a note, um, all I have to do, of course, watch, it won't work. <laughs> if I type in Bingen 1994, yeah, it automatically creates the link to that file. Um, and so it makes linking from note to note or from note to a reference very easy. You can see it came up here in the preview version. If I click it, it takes me to the, the paper. Again, Devon Think does a thousand different things. So I'm showing this to you at a very high level, um, but you can kind of see how it would be pretty easy to implement a Zettelcast and then Devon Think. I think it costs me $200 for that software. Um, there are other maybe ver less expensive versions, but it's a paid tool. They do have a free um, trial. And in fact, I'll leave links to all this below the video. Um, what did I end up with? I ended up with um, Obsidian. Uh, you can totally see I've been looking a lot at, at reti retirement spending. Um, I haven't, of course, transferred my notes yet from Devon Think to Obsidian. Um, but Obsidian is similar to Devon Think. You can see you've got notes here. Um, here I was, I had this idea that the pace of output as a writer, like how quickly you can produce something is inversely proportional to its value, right? So, uh, I'm going to put value, um, very little, I guess. So I was looking at how, for example, you know, I can go tweet something in a second. It's value eh, probably, probably zero, uh, but, um, very little. You know, a short blog post you could put out daily. It's got a little more value, but not a lot. And anyway, these are just thoughts that I've, I've, I've had. Now I get into more technical things like the Guyton Klinger spending decision rule in retirement. It's uh, based on a paper written in 2006. The point is you can create these individual notes, not unlike Devon Think. Uh, this doesn't have nearly the features that Devon Think has, but I actually view that as something better. I wanted something simple. Um, I don't need the bells and whistles. The thing I really like about Obsidian, apart from the fact that it's free, is that it doesn't create a database. So Devon Think you, it creates a database. It's a proprietary database. Obsidian doesn't. It just sits on top of a folder you create anywhere on your system. And in my case, each of these notes is actually a, a, a markdown file. And it's in, for me, it's in Documents, let me show you in what I call Zettelkasten. So here it is. This is my Obsidian file. So I have complete control over the file structure. I can actually open up any of these files outside of Obsidian. Um, the, the, the tool I use for Markdown is um, Ulysses, which is coming up right now, which is a writing tool you can see here. So here's the Yale spending rule. It's a, a note that I've created inside Obsidian, but it's just saved as a markdown file uh, in my documents folder uh, on my Mac. And so I have complete access to it. If Obsidian were to go away tomorrow, all of my files would still be there. It's in the documents folder, which automatically gets saved to, to iCloud. So there's a backup. Um, and if we want to look at this same file within Obsidian, it's right here linking uh, to other notes is very easy just as you can see you just put this double bracket and it actually shows you all the notes that you've got and if you started typing it would pull one up you could link to it and it's that simple 
Um, the other thing I like about it is, uh, let's imagine you're creating a note and um, I'll use a thousand true fans, that article I showed you a minute ago that I'd read before and completely forgot. Let's say I, I wanna create a note about that idea, but I don't have it yet. I'm in a different note. I don't wanna stop what I'm doing, but they're connected. So if, if, if the Yale spending rule, uh, which has to do with how endowments uh, determine how much money they can spend each year from the endowment without depleting the fund over time. Uh, let's just say it was related to a thousand true friends and I wanted to create a note about that, but later, but I wanted to reference it here. I could still reference it in this case, a thousand true fr friends, and it actually creates a link. And if I were to look at that link, you can see it says is not created yet. Click to create. So I come back to it, click that link which I'll do now, and it creates the note with that with that uh, title, and then I can now document a thousand true fans. So uh, that's Obsidian, a great piece of software. Uh, I've actually only used it for 24 hours, but I, so far I love it. I'm gonna continue using it, and I wanted to share it with you. So it's now 4.58 uh, on a very early Wednesday morning. I've been up for less than an hour. Um, wanted to share with you kind of my crazy world this morning and how I kind of go from content to content to content. In the past, I've totally forgotten about it. Now I want to start documenting what I read, uh, the content I consume. This is how I'm doing it. And so now I need to create a note on a thousand true fans so uh, I don't forget about it and can maybe use it in my own writing, in my own work, my own thinking uh, down the road. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have any questions, leave a, a comment. Uh, below the video. Until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom. And I have no idea what that's got to do with this video.